Okay, good evening everyone. Uh, welcome here. It's a pleasure to welcome you to this Facebook Live event. Um, it's being hosted by Existential Analysis in the United Kingdom. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Derek Clausen, um, and uh, I'm going to be the one who's going to be hosting tonight. Uh, I think most of you don't know me so well, so I'll say a few words about myself in just a minute. But before we do, i say just a few words of, of introduction to kind of let you know how the next half an hour will go or so. I trust that it is being broadcast, and I'm hoping that this is going to work. This is the first time I'm doing a Facebook Live event like this. Um, the plan for tonight, for this evening, is going to be for to be with you for about 30 minutes there. The first 20 or so of that are going to be me speaking to you, or speaking to my computer, I guess, and hoping that it comes through to you. Um, and then you will have about 10 minutes dedicated to questions and answers there. So I hope that that's something that is going to be working out just fine there. I want to say just a brief word of thank you at the beginning to Julia Morozova for organizing tonight, for broadcasting this, and for uh, doing kind of the back behind the scenes work. Thank you very much, Julia, for your for your efforts there. I know that is much appreciated uh, too. And a, a big thank you also, especially to Alfred Lengle and to Existential Analysis or the GLE in Vienna. Alfred, thank you for inviting me to be here. Um, and I am hoping that this will be something that will be of benefit to everyone who is watching here tonight. Um, I'm uh, coming to you, just maybe perhaps a few words of introduction about myself. I'm coming to you or speaking to you from uh, a small city just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. So it's 11 o'clock in the morning here, and I presume that most of you who are watching or who are involved are going to be in London or in the UK there. So greetings to you from across the pond here. Let me say just a few words about myself. I've been involved in existential analysis for quite some time. I had the privilege of meeting Alfred and his family back in Vienna in 2002, and we've been in contact since then. Uh, we started uh, the training in existential analysis with Alfred and with a few others from the GLE back in 2006. Um, and since that time, we've been running successive cohorts of psychotherapists, training psychotherapists who are interested in learning this particular way, this particular approach to psychotherapy. For me, it's been something that's been deeply moving and life-changing, has been enjoyable, uh, has been challenging at times. It's something that I use on a regular basis. And this is perhaps uh, one of the things that's that's beautiful or that's that's so enjoyable for me about existential analysis, that it's not simply a set of skills or a theoretical approach to psychotherapy, but also that it is something that is uh, something that is can be used in your own life, can be applied to your own relationships, and that it, in this way treats the psychotherapist, treats the person who is in training as a human being and, and helps us expand our own approach to life, to, to live more intentionally, to live with, as we would say, an existential analysis with an inner yes to our life. And so for those who are interested, I hope that this will be something uh, that will be uh, beneficial to you and something that you will find helpful in your own life as well. So we've been doing the, the training at EA in, in Canada since 2006. Um, in addition to that, just to let you know, I've been involved in teaching at a small liberal arts university here in Canada. Uh, training people to become psychotherapists. We have a program, an MA in counseling psychology. I also am active clinically uh, in my work, uh, working mostly in what would be called rehabilitation psychology there. Um, and uh, this, the work that I'm doing here, uh, the, the, the topic that we're discussing here today, that of acceptance, is one that shows up frequently in my work. I work a lot with people who have... Um, traumatic brain injuries or who suffer with chronic pain, who suffer with unexpected illnesses in their life. And then life suddenly becomes changed. And one of the initial questions 
that comes up is that of acceptance, is that of the question of, can I be with this? Can I be with this new, with this chained situation? And if so, how can I be with it? What, what, uh, what can I do to enlarge my capacity to allow a situation to be what it is, to allow and increase my acceptance of it? And that's not an easy thing to do. And in fact, most of the time, and this kind of brings us in to our topic of tonight, most of the time, we, we don't have a lot of good training in our lives, in our own capacities to being with a situation, to allowing a situation that is challenging, that is beyond our own capacity. In the West, in North America especially, I find we have a lot of training in, uh, a lot of training in being, mm, overlooking our limits, in pushing our limits, in expanding ourselves beyond what we can do. But we don't have a lot of opportunities to uh, yeah, live with our limitations, to acknowledge our limitations, and to expand our capacity to allowing. It's not really the language of corporate North America, the language that we train our children in. It is much more. So this, this, this language of allowing, this, this capacity to allow and to expand our capacity to allow is not one that we often that we often receive training in. And so it can be hard. It can be especially hard for people who struggle with or who don't have experience in allowing realities that we don't like. So um, some of the examples that we find clinically where this shows up has to do with unexpected changes in relationships, losses in relationships, challenges with respect to my own health, with allowing a diagnosis or allowing uh, a change in my situation there. We oftentimes have the experience inwardly that, no, I can't be with this. This is not something that I can allow. So the spontaneous reaction that comes from us frequently is that of not so much an inner yes, which is what we focus on in existential analysis, but an inner no, um, which is something I think initially when we as a psychotherapist begin with accepting that as well. It may be that we cannot say yes to something. And paradoxically can make room for a greater yes by allowing this inner no and trying to understand this inner no. But the question here for us tonight is how can we expand our capacity to allow something to be, to to expand our capacity to for greater acceptance there. One of the things that becomes important for us initially clinically in working with clients there, in my experience, is to begin with some clarification even with what we mean by acceptance. Um, acceptance is a word that is often confusing to clients, and it can be confusing to us to say, what do we even mean by acceptance? Okay, I, I will try and speak a bit louder. I just got a comment there from Alexandra, so I'll do my best to speak louder. Um, thank you. Um, so one of the, the questions can be initially, how can we uh, clarify? What do we even mean with acceptance there? And it's good to start with uh, clarity what we do not mean with acceptance. Acceptance does not mean for us that something is good. When a client receives a ne negative diagnosis, a poor diagnosis, uh, it doesn't mean that this is this is good, something that we have to value, something that we find is good. In fact, oftentimes it's a life-limiting experience. It's something that uh, we, we find actually as, as taking away life rather than adding to life. And so it's not good. And it can be kind of helpful for clients to know that, no, we don't need to experience this as good. This doesn't have to be good. It can also be the experience for, for some clients, and this is what I hear most commonly, that if I accept something, if I come to a place where I can say I will allow it, then what this means automatically is that I give up. I throw up my hands, I surrender, 
um, I resign, and acceptance is not that either. Resignation and surrender is, are passive, whereas acceptance is an active personal engagement with that. And this is perhaps then the place where we can turn towards and saying, what do we actually mean with acceptance? What do I actually do when I say I accept? In existential analysis, we understand acceptance as this finding of a personal yes to a situation. It's active. That is, I am doing something within myself. I am not resigning myself, but it's an adoption of an active attitude. And it's personal. That is, it is free. I don't, mm, I don't force it. And it's, it's kind of an allowing, even within myself, of an attitude to develop. Um, and I can, I can make it more happen, or I can increase the likelihood or the, my capacities, the prerequisites for it to happen. And I'll speak a bit about that shortly. But it is something that, in some ways, like inner consent, it both comes to me, it arises spontaneously within me, and it is something to which I can then also give my active, intentional consent. So acceptance is allowing, it is letting be, it is what clients often say is, it is what it is. I come to a place where I can, it's in that way a change of my attitude in relation to a situation, rather than the changing of the situation itself. And in doing that, in allowing, in opening myself up, I take something into my reality. I allow something to become part of my reality as a given, as a fact, without necessarily knowing what to do with it, that I have to fix it or change it, right? And so it is then kind of an open stance. If we were to, to depict acceptance physically, we would show it as open arms, as outstretched arms there. We would show it as taking in. Uh, if, you, if you want an uh, example within art, Michelangelo's Pieta is a wonderful example of the physical posture that we adopt when we accept. That is, taking something, allowing something, having it become part of my life and my reality there. So I'm not rejecting it. And so in accepting, I make something my reality. I give my yes to the reality that already is. And I allow it. I allow it to be real for me. I allow it to be true for me. And this requires a certain amount of humility. It requires a certain amount of my subjecting myself to this reality, that I am subject in some ways to my reality, that there are some things in my reality that are larger than myself, and to which I can either say no, I can reject, or which, in acceptance, I can find an inner yes there. When we don't experience that, when we, when we, uh, or conversely, when I experience that, when I, when I can come to the place of acceptance, inwardly I begin to have the experience that I can be with it, with, with whatever the it is, with whatever reality that I am faced with, I begin to have the sense that I can be with it. And this would be a good way of perhaps summarizing it. And you may think in within your own life, are there situations where that are difficult that I'm facing where I have the sense that I can be with it? I allow it to be, and it, whatever this it, this unwanted situation is, it allows me to be. I have enough space in my life. I have enough protection in my life. I have enough ground and the sense of being held. In German, we would use the word Geborgenheit. I have enough space. I have enough protection. I have enough Geborgenheit, enough ground underneath me that I feel held enough to be able to make this unwanted reality part of my life. 
Again, it doesn't mean necessarily that I think it is something that is good, or that I have to enjoy it, or that we have to immediately find meaning in it. Um, oftentimes, when we deal with tragic situations, we want to jump over it so quickly and find something good in it. And it may not be that there is something good that I can see in it. Um, but rather, what I may be invited, invited to do by life, by this situation, is to expand my capacity. And in that way, uh, being, or, or, or that way, acceptance is also a capacity. It is a capacity to allow something to be what it is. So the question then comes, how do I do this? And I want to just quickly say a few steps there and we will expand more on this in the second in the second talk the second talk and that just by the way as a side there is going to be a second talk that is going to focus more around practice there that will be happening on january 17th but if i were to say even a few words for how could we how can we even now go about doing something expanding our capacity that now of course to the extent that I have experienced myself as being accepted or as accepting myself in the different situations, the more practice I have with acceptance of acceptance, the, the better I get at it. It is a skill in that way that I can hone, that I can uh, improve there. But if we come to a specific situation, how do we improve, increase our capacity, our own space within ourselves for allowing something to be. The first step for us becomes kind of a perception of reality, of looking outward into the situation. And it becomes important to know that there are some situations that are good and important to accept, unchangeable realities that are there. But I also want to say that there are some situations where uh, this profound no that comes in us has a real reality. I'm thinking especially of situations of abuse or of violence where I have the feeling I cannot be with this. And I, as a psychotherapist, would join you and say, no, do not be with that. Do not be with that, where it becomes more important to change the situation rather than accept a really unacceptable situation. But the first look goes outward towards the situation towards what is and oftentimes in our lives uh, when we experience anxiety that first look towards whatever this feared or this difficult situation is doesn't really happen more often than not we flee from it we avoid it we don't look at it quickly and so even beginning to look at the situation be able to differentiate between what is real and what is factual versus what is my fantasy or my imagining for how it is, can be important clarification. The first step then is looking towards the outside and seeing, seeing and having this kind of sober second look, so to speak, towards what is, what actually is there. The second part of it then goes inwardly towards ourselves, towards the perception of my own inner reality. It's related to my own being. And the question for there within that step is, do I have the strength and the capacity to allow whatever this outer is, whatever the situation is that I'm faced with, to be? The third step then becomes a letting go there. And much letting go has to happen. Oftentimes it has to do with letting go of my expectations, and letting go of my plans, Letting go of what I thought was going to happen. Letting go, letting go of what I think should happen there. And so there's a kind of a releasing step that happens. It may mean saying goodbye to some things. It may mean surrendering and letting go of some expectations that I thought how my life was supposed to go. I was not supposed to be in this accident. I was not supposed to have this diagnosis. This relationship was not supposed to end there and so it can be helpful for me to become aware of what my expectations are of what my plans were and then allowing those two also to sometimes let go let go of them and so i clarify in that next step then 
my new reality. I, rec I clarify in the reality of what is mine um, and whether I can stand with it and if I can stand to this reality. Can I allow my expectations to let go? This becomes in psychotherapy, in my experience, most of psychotherapy has to do around acceptance, has to do with clarifying and letting go of expectations um, and clarifying with with what it can, what would it would mean? And clarifying what, what acceptance is and what it would actually mean to accept something. There's oftentimes lots of difficulties or lots of misunderstanding about what it would mean to have, to actually say yes to an unwanted situation. And then finally, if I can take this reality as it is into my life, I can speak about it and I, and I can allow it to be what it is, so that I perceive outward my, the situation as to what it is, accurately, correctly. Sometimes we need someone else to help us look clearly at the way something is, because our own imagination, our own expectations cloud it so much. We look inwardly at our own capacity, we begin to let go of expectations and plans, for what should have been, what would have been nice, and we expand in this way our own capacity to allow something to be what it is. So I'm hoping that this will be some help to you, that this, what I have kind of summarized here, will be some, yeah, will be uh, beneficial to you. I'm looking with one eye to the clock where I'm a little bit over already. Um, and so I wanted to just take, perhaps for the next eight minutes or so, take a bit of time. Uh, perhaps there are things that I said that were not so clear, or there are examples in your life that you would like to bring up, or there's questions that are coming for you now. So I'd invite you just to, to feel free to offer some questions if you have them here. And I, I notice on the right hand of my screen some, some comments already. Um, but if you if you have them, please, please feel free to pass along some questions at this moment. I'll just pause to give you some, some opportunity to do that. Okay. Well, I'm not, I'm not seeing any questions right now. I wonder, Julia, is there anything that you would want me to address? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, I may have answered so many questions already with what I said, or perhaps I have left you so confused that it's harder, harder to say what the questions are. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll just say as you are, are thinking about that, just a few things about the next steps and what will happen here. I just actually, as we were getting that, I got an uh, a message or a question from Julia. The question is, what if acceptance means understanding that you are much worse than you imagined? It be, can be good for some people, but it can be unbearable for others. Isn't it better for someone to stay in the imaginary land? That's a good question. <laughs> I think we, to a certain extent, live with a fair, some self-deception about ourselves there. And it can be, to a certain extent, functional to be a bit deceived about, about ourselves or about our situation there. That we, it may be a bit easier to live with a bit of that. I'm thinking of, of the research of Shelley Taylor out of UCLA that shows that in some ways there's a, there's a certain amount of functionality that happens with self-deception there. The problem is, of course, that it, it doesn't really help us to deal with reality. And if I can, cannot begin to kind of engage with myself and allow and, and, and be able to look at myself 
soberly or to be able to look at myself in a way that uh, that is honest it doesn't give me the practice it doesn't give me build my skill and my capacity to be able to face situations that are unwanted there and i think i hear a second part of the question there are other questions okay please go on the right i will see I do not, at this point, see any further questions. Oh, here they are. Thank you. Thank you. I... Mm, how can one help? Here's one, a question from Tatiana. How can one help someone you love to accept the failure? Mm. Well, that can be very difficult, Tatiana. It's, it depends a bit on the failure. <laughs> that that is there um, and who the person is in your life uh, but a failure it sometimes there's relatively <laughs> let, let, me, let me put I'm thinking of some examples from my clients who face this in their lives in their lives of their partners um, thinking particularly of a client who uh, whose, whose husband or whose partner was dealing is dealing with a significant addiction problem there and doesn't seem to be able to see this doesn't seem to acknowledge it if we can begin to experience it or acknowledge it as something that is a challenge that is a huge first step there um, to accepting something that is difficult or that is a failure and then the question will be well what do we mean with this failure is this really a failure or is there a different way of understanding the situation? I'll try and go, that was a, a bit more of a general answer. I'll try and find a more, a bit more of a specific question. How, another question from Michael here was, how do I, how do you know it is time to let go? Mm. <laughs> this is a, a significant challenge there. It's, it ultimately becomes a question that we need to answer for ourselves there. Um, and I don't think there's necessarily, I, I don't know within myself. I'm thinking of, for example, challenges in relationships. For how long do I hang in there? How long do I keep trying? in a relationship or do i need to come to a place where i say no i can't actually continue in this relationship i hear this a lot from clients who are perhaps disappointed in their relationships or disappointed in their partner don't know uh, don't are not really satisfied in the relationship and is it the right thing to say yeah i can't actually be in this relationship anymore it's not life-giving for me it doesn't lead to any good outcomes for me and it's it's easier in some ways if it's very very clear if it's if the situation is so untenable that i can't if the relationship is so untenable that i can't simply cannot be in it anymore then it becomes easier and clearer what's more difficult is if i don't <laughs> there, there's some things that are good about it but there's many things that are more challenging about it um, and so it becomes very hard to know in those situations, can I hang in there? And it becomes really your own personal process there. Um, and so my suggestion in that way, Michael, is this is something that needs to, that may need to be worked through in psychotherapy, that may need to be worked through in a conversation with others for yourself. Because the question then always is, how much capacity can I allow even myself to live with disappointments, to live with disappointments in relationships, in relation to other people. Um, and that's, some, that's something that for some people they can live with it, they can allow it, whereas for others they simply can't. Let me see if there's a few more questions. There was one question about the uh, acceptance as we've talked about here versus the difference between act say acceptance and commitment therapy 
and acceptance and existential analysis. I, I have to confess, Jean, Jeanette, that I'm not really that familiar with how acceptance is defined within uh, ACT. I know ACT is a more of a behavioral approach there. Um, I, my sense is that it is influenced a fair bit from Buddhism and from mindfulness there, and so I expect that there would be some overlap there, but I, I don't know enough right now at this point to be able to say what precisely would be the differences between us. Perhaps someone else can point to that. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at our time. I notice a few more questions. I'll try and perhaps respond to some of those questions online there, but I think that this is, we've come to the end of our time for today. And so I'm, I'm apologizing. I apologize for not getting to all of your for your questions, but I want to thank you very much for for your engagement here with asking these questions. My apologies for not seeing them sooner. We wasted a little bit of time there in that. Um, but I'm glad that you can be here. My hope, my hope is that uh, this will have been some help to you, and that I'll see you again on the the 17th of January in next year, where we'll do a bit more of a focus on some practical parts again, so that may be of some interest to you. Please also know that there are additional uh, Facebook Live events and um, webinars that are coming up in the new year, all leading up to the launch of what will hopefully be a cohort in London, in the UK, um, on existential analysis there. So I look forward to seeing you, those of you who are able to come and be part of this in January. Um, I know some of my colleagues will be making additional presentations uh, in the future, and so I'm, I, I hope that you will check out those events as well. So thank you again to you all for participating. Thank you for Julia for setting this up and getting me oriented towards the, the platform. Um, I wish you all a good day and a, a good evening here, and greetings greetings from, from um, yeah, across the pond to you all. Have a good evening. <laughs>